Hi boys and girls, I'm here to read another chapter from Almost Super. I'm reading chapter 12, One of Us is About to be Disappointed. The 1080 went downtown. It also stopped at the public library, so Benny and I weren't totally lying when we asked our parents if we could head there after school. We just didn't mention the very small fact that we would be riding with a Johnson. That's a conversation I'd rather not have. The public bus smelled like every other bus I'd ever been on. The stale air that carried the scent of humans in coats, newspapers, and also the slightest hint of adventure. Juanita sat at the back of the bus, her dark curls poking just above the seats. It was a perfect place for an ambush, but I didn't see any other suspicious looking people. I checked the bus driver twice. The last thing I wanted was to be trapped in a bus driven by a Johnson. Benny and I took a seat across the aisle from Juanita. No one else was within hearing distance. Without breaking eye contact, I took in everything I could. Juanita had on a black woolen coat, pink gloves, and a backpack. The backpack looked like it held nothing more than books, but I couldn't be sure. Hello, Juanita said. Hello, I replied, realizing this is exactly how our conversation had started at the grocery store. Then again, a lot of conversations start that way. You wanted to meet us here? I couldn't read her face. You wanted to see my power, she said. I nodded. Do you have to show it to us on a bus? That sounded silly, but if she'd gotten powers that were as silly as ours, then anything was possible. Juanita shook her head. I can't just show it to you, Juanita said. It wouldn't prove anything. Why not, I asked, because, she lowered her voice, if I'm really a super super, I can do any power. So I'd like you, I, so I'd show you a single worthless power, but you would still wonder if I could do all the other powers. I hadn't thought of that. I looked over at Benny, who just shrugged. What was going, Ben, where are we going, I asked. How are you going to prove you've only got one power? I'll tell you when we get there, Juanita said. It's not far. Then he leaned forward in his seat and held up his pointer finger. Just for the record, he said, we're not afraid of you. I thought I saw a hint of a smile on Juanita's lips. I'm glad to hear that, Benny, she said. You shouldn't be. That sounded to me like something a spider would tell a fly right before the fly became dinner. An elderly gentleman came and sat near the back, and we couldn't talk about our powers anymore. We rode in silence. Four stops later, Juanita stood. This is it, she said. Benny and I followed Juanita off the bus. We were in a nice part of the city, just north of downtown. Fences of stone or iron surrounded the homes. Juanita came to a stop in front of a large gate. The property was well maintained. I could just be... I could just make out a towering, sleek-looking house sitting back among the trees. This is my grandmother's house, Juanita said. It's our headquarters. Benny's eyes grew wide, and I couldn't stop from laughing. Oh, so you brought us right to your headquarters? We've been looking for this place for years. You wouldn't just... Juanita wasn't even listening to me. She pressed her palm to a glowing pad built into the side of a stone wall. The iron gate opened, and she walked through. Benny stepped forward, but I grabbed the sleeve of his coat. Benny, I whispered. What if we're walking into a trap? Benny shrugged. We're superheroes. Walking into traps isn't our job description. You're crazy, I said. You know that, right? I felt for the phone in my pocket. The weight gave me courage. We could always call for help. Looking around one last time, I followed Benny through the gate. Juanita led us across a cobblestone walkway toward the front door. This looks like a mansion, Benny said. The house was made of gray stone with wooden shingles. It had two stories with massive chimneys sticking out of the roof every 20 feet. Juanita spoke over her shoulder. When I was little, I used to think it was a castle and my grandmother was a queen. And what's your grandmother going to say when we walk in your front door, I asked. Hopefully nobody's going to see you, Juanita said. But if you'd rather wait out here, that's fine with me. Just don't try to leave. The alarm will sound. And then they'll probably let the dogs loose, and that won't be fun for you at all. How are we supposed to move around your headquarters without being seen, Benny asked. Juanita shrugged. We'll wing it. We'll wing it. Why does everybody keep saying that, I mumbled. For what felt like the hundredth time, Juanita ignored me. She pushed open the door and went inside. Benny followed. Casting one last look over my shoulder, I entered too. I heard Benny gasp. As soon as my eyes adjusted, I saw why. 
Covering every square inch of the entryway were hundreds of portraits in various shapes and sizes. Some had large frames with delicate carvings. Others were framed by polished black wood or even simple brown. There must be a thousand, Benny said. Not a thousand, Winita said, although I've never been able to count them all. I've always, I always get mixed up around 200. The faces made me nervous. It felt like hundreds of eyes following me wherever I went. And not just hundreds of eyes, hundreds of Johnson eyes. I stepped closer and examined a few of the paintings. One picture had a man with a round face and a toothy grin. I thought he looked familiar. His face was jolly, but each of his pupils had a hint of red. Another painting had a woman dressed in brown, a brown velvet dress. Everything in the picture was crisp and sharp, but the woman herself was blurry. It looked, I looked closer, but it didn't help. The largest portrait hung in the middle of a wall. A soft white light shone down on it from the ceiling. An old woman holding a glass cane came, sat on what looked like a throne. Behind her were towering clouds rising from a green field. If this is Juanita's grandmother, I could understand why Juanita thought she was a queen. Who are all these people, I asked. My relatives, Juanita said. Some live here in Split Rock, but most are in other parts of the state or even farther. The portraits look like, the portraits look normal enough that we can have them hanging out here in the open. But if you look closely, you can see the power in each person hidden in the portrait. The man with the red pupils, I'd seen him before when watching battle footage. He sh could shoot lasers out of his eyes. And the woman who was blurry, probably a speedy. Is this your grandmother, I asked, pointing to the largest painting. Juanita nodded. She can, tr she can control the weather. Hey, Benny said, is that why it's always raining at our family reunions? Sorry, you got to turn the lights on really quick. Oh, there we go. Juanita smiled. Grandmother had better things to do than make it rain on your reunions. Benny touched my arm and pointed to a polished metal vase sitting against a wall. As soon as I saw it, I realized that there were more of them spread throughout the room. They were silver in color and about six inches tall. Benny raised his eyebrows and I shrugged my shoulders. So can we see your power, I asked. Benny and I can't be gone long. I want to show you two things, Juanita said. My cousin Victor finished my painting two days ago. It shows what my power is, and it's downstairs. I didn't bother mentioning that her cousin Victor could have could have paint I didn't bother mentioning that her cousin Victor could have painted anything. What's the second thing? I'll tell you after the painting, Juanita said. She led the way to, the, to an elevator and pushed the down button, opening the doors. We stepped inside and the doors closed behind us. Earlier, I felt trapped. Now I felt downright claustrophobic. I noticed another silver vase in the elevator. Juanita turned to a small panel of buttons. She pressed the fire alarm button, the door, the door closed button, the second floor button twice, and then the fire alarm button again. A secret panel slid open next to Juanita, revealing more buttons than I'd ever seen in an elevator. Whoa, Benny said, pointing to a large bank of buttons. The very last one had 104 printed on it. I thought there were only two floors. My Uncle Jared explains it best, Juanita said. Our headquarters is like a skyscraper, but only the top two floors are above ground. Can I push the button, Benny asked. Dad never lets me push the button. We're going to level 28, Juanita said. No, wait, level 29. Benny had already pushed, tw pushed the 28 button. He pressed 29 as well. What's on level 28? The elevator shuddered as we descended deep into the Johnson's headquarters. For the first time on this trip, Juanita looked nervous. Actually, I can't remember. I always get lost in this place, but maybe you better hide just in case. We're in an elevator, I said. Where exactly are we supposed to hide? Juanita looked at the panel. I don't know, but you have about six more seconds. The elevator dinged. There was no time to think. Benny and I split up on either side of the door, our backs pressed against the wall. I looked at the back of the elevator, which was polished metal. In the reflection, I could just make out what was happening on level 28. Four people sat at a table. One of them shot bubbles into the air from a plastic bubble launcher. A small robot that looked like a dog, jumped up and down on the table, snatching at each bubble with its razor-sharp razor teeth. The other people at the table cheered the robot on. At the sound of the door opening, they all turned and looked at the elevator. No one seemed to notice our reflections. Juanita waved. Sorry about that, wrong level. No worries, one of them said, and the doors closed. 
That's right, Juanita said. Level 28 is research and development. That's a weird place to hang out. I felt a twinge of jealousy. We didn't have anything nearly as cool as a robotic dog. I'd always been proud of my family because we kept the Johnsons from destroying the city, but now, now it felt like maybe my family wasn't as amazing as I first thought. The doors opened again on level 29, and Juanita stepped out of the elevator. She looked around and then motioned for Benny and me to follow. This room had high ceilings, making it feel like we were inside a warehouse. Pieces of canvas and half-finished portraits rested against large crates scattered around the floor. A table covered with tubes of paint stood against one wall. In the middle of the room was a painting with a cloth draped over top of it. I counted four more silver vases on the floor. Footsteps came from farther back in the studio. Juanita took a sharp breath. Hide, she whispered, quick. I lunged for one of the crates. There was enough space between the wall and the box for me to crouch without being seen. I peeked around the corner and looked for Benny. My mouth, my brother's head, poked out from behind a large canvas leaning against the far wall. He waved and gave me a thumbs up. I put my fingers to my lips. He nodded and hunkered down. A woman stepped into view. I recognized her from the portraits downstairs, Juanita's grandmother. She didn't wear a crown, but she still looked like a queen. She wore a deep blue dress, and her black and gray hair was wrapped in a tight bun. Standing straight and tall, she held a glass walking cane as if it were a scepter. From my place behind the crate, I could see both Juanita and her grandmother, but it was dark enough that I didn't think her grandmother would see me. Benny was completely blocked from their view. Ah, Juanita, Grandmother Johnson said. I see you got Victor's message. I'm glad you came, sweetheart. I know it sounds strange, but the most surprising thing was hearing Grandma Johnson, queen of the supervillains, call her granddaughter sweetheart. I hadn't, I'd always pictured the leader of, sorry, Split Rock. I always pictured the leader of the Split Rock Johnsons as a witch. I'd like to be alone, Grandmother, Juanita said. If she was nervous about sneaking two Baileys into the Johnsons' headquarters, she didn't show it. And I'd like some company, Grandma Johnson said. One of us is about to be disappointed, and I'll let you in on a little secret. It isn't going to be me. Here I was staring at the leader of the Johnson clan, the woman who'd led the fight against my family for who knows how many years, and I couldn't help but like her. It's time to talk about this, honey, Grandmother Johnson tapped her cane on the floor. You seem awfully disappointed for a girl who didn't even want a power in the first place. I looked over at Benny. He stared back at me, a look of confusion covering his face. Every kid in the city wanted to be a super. What was Juanita's grandmother talking about? I told you last week that no matter what power you got, you would be able to help with this family, Grandmother Johnson said. I still believe that. This power was a sign, Juanita said. I don't want to be a super, and this power just shows that the universe doesn't want me to be one either. It doesn't matter what we want, Grandmother Johnson said. We are, we are the only ones who can stand up to those Baileys. She reared her head back, threw it forward, and spit. I heard a small ting. The silver vases, they weren't vases at all. They were spittoons. Juanita started pacing the room, her hands clasped behind her, her face scrunched, like Benny when he was working on math. You have two villains at your school, Grandmother Johnson continued. I squirmed at the idea of being called a villain. You have received your power, and now you need to stand up and join us in our fight, whether you think you can or not. It's not a question of whether I think I can, Grandmother, Juanita said, and I heard her anger rising in her voice. I don't want anything to do with this. I wondered if Juanita had forgotten that Benny and I were still in the room. You're a Johnson, my child, Juanita, Juanita's grandmother said. You are a super, and you don't have a choice in the matter. I do have a choice in the matter, and I won't do it, Juanita continued her pacing, walking in a tight figure eight around her grandmother and then around the concealed portrait. No matter how, how, how hard we fight, it's never good enough. We've been fighting for decades. Then we keep fighting, Grandmother Johnson said. We are up to the challenge. No matter how good we are, sometimes people still get hurt. Juanita's voice broke, and now I know, and now I knew she'd forgotten Benny and I were in the room. She was on the verge of tears. No matter how super we are, sometimes people still die. Juanita stopped, 
Her head pointed to the floor. Her head covered her face. Her hair covered her face. But I could hear a heart. I. Juanita stopped. Her head pointed to the floor. Her hair covered her face, but I could hear harsh breathing. Juanita wiped her eyes. Grandmother Johnson broke her silence. You know, there was nothing any of us could could do to save your mother. I held my breath. I know, Juanita's voice was almost a whisper. But if she hadn't tried to save that driver, if she just stayed home instead of trying to be super. Your mother wasn't trying to be super, Grandmother Johnson said. She was super. Your mother saw that accident and saved three people before the explosion. She, Grandmother Johnson stopped, then cleared her throat. Your mother used her powers for good, always for good, just as you must use your powers to, Juanita almost flew to the cloth covered portrait. To what, Juanita was shouting now. What am I supposed to do with this? With a single tug, she ripped off the cloth from the easel, revealing a painting beneath. I couldn't tear my gaze away from the portrait. Her cousin Victor had placed the painting right under a soft white light and it seemed to glow in the middle of the room. In the painting, Juanita stood in a field of flowers. She wore a pink dress and her hair was curled and fell down past her shoulders. At school, every time Juanita looked at me, she was either scowling or spitting, but Victor had captured a beautiful smile and a shining face. In the background, jets of water shot up from behind her, forming a magnificent arc. From where I was hiding, the droplets of water seemed so real, it looked like somebody had sprayed water on the canvas. Do you know what Victor's power is? Do you know what Victor's power is? Grandmother put her hand on Juanita's shoulder. Juanita stared at the painting and held the palms of her hands to her cheeks. She didn't answer for several moments. Painting is his power, Juanita said. No one can paint like Victor. That's what most of the relatives think, Grandmother Johnson said. Victor is a private person and he doesn't bother to correct them, but that's not the case. He spent years working on his art. I have some of his early work that looks like it was painted by an elephant with a stiff trunk. No, his real power lies in the ability to see what others can't. With a simple glance, he sees into the heart and soul of another person. Cousin Victor looked into your heart, Grandmother Johnson said, and this is what he painted. Now look at the portrait and tell me the little girl in there doesn't have something important to offer the world. Juanita said nothing. <clears throat> You have a lot to think about, Juanita. You have a lot to think about, Grandmother Johnson said. I'm going to leave you alone. When you're ready to talk again, you let me know. The elevator dinged and Grandmother Johnson was gone. Juanita stood in front of the painting. She stared at the portrait, but I don't think she saw it. I crawled out from my hiding space and I went to stand next to her. It's a very nice painting, I said, and Juanita jumped. Benny came forward until his nose almost touched the portrait. What is your power, Benny said. Are you a gusher? Because if you are, that's just plain cool. Juanita shook her head. She continued to stare at the painting, but I don't think she really saw it. We don't have a name for my power, Juanita said. I guess if we did, it would be a flusher. A what? Benny and I said at the same time. I looked closely at the painting. At the base of each stream of water wasn't, wasn't a small fountainhead like I first thought. There were toilets, tiny little toilets. I saw sadness on Juanita's face. If a toilet is backed up, I can pull the handle, the pipes become clear, Juanita said. I'm a super flusher. And that's the end of chapter 12. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll keep reading.